Hello, everyone. This is Hao Wan, and today I'm presenting our work on adaptation across continuously indexed domains. This is joint work with Hao He and Lina. Domain adaptation considers the problem of transferring from a source domain to a target domain, usually where can access the data xs and labels yx in the source domain, as well as unlabeled data yt in the target domain. The goal is to train a model that predicts the label yt in the target domain accurately. Naturally, this setting can be extended to multi-source single target or even multi-source multi-target. However, current domain adaptation has a problem. It's categorical. It usually formulates adaptation problems as transferring the data from one category to another. For example, one may consider adapting a classification model from the MNIST dataset to the SVHN dataset. People also consider other tasks, such as adapting a model from RGB images to DEF images. However, in the real world, problems are more complicated than that and usually involve not just categorical domains, but continuous domains. Let me give you some examples. In medical applications, the doctors may need to transfer disease diagnosis across patients of different ages. If we treat patients from different age groups as different domains, it's unlikely to produce the best adaptation results since it doesn't capture the relation between disease symptoms and patient's age. Another example is that in self-driving car applications, they usually require the model to adapt to the environment that's continuously changing over time. The time as a domain index contains much information such as lighting conditions and traffic conditions. So it's better to leverage this domain index during adaptation. To have some intuition about continuously indexed domain adaptation, let's consider the following toy example. Imagine we are performing a binary classification task across 30 continuously indexed domains. Those domains lie on a large circle from domain 1, domain 2, all the way to domain 15 and 30. We color the data by labels, red for positive and blue for negative. The task is, given the label data in the first few domains and unlabeled data in other domains, we want to learn a model that works for the target domains. Let me first show you some examples of applying categorical domain adaptation methods. We can use a method called ADA, which treats all source domains as one single source and all target domains as one single target, and then apply one-step adaptation. We can see that the model does not generalize at all. Another idea is to use DANN, which divides the target domain into smaller paths and apply one-to-many adaptation. That does not work either. So how should we perform continuous domain adaptation? We note that categorical domain adaptation fails because they cannot measure the distance between domain indexes. It has no idea that domain 1 and 8 are closer, but domain 1 and 15 are more distant. Therefore, it cannot capture how the data distribution continuously changes along with the domain index. As a result, when adapting from domain 1 to domain 8 and 15, categorical domain adaptation simply transforms the data into a common space, leading to poor performance. To address this problem, our idea is to leverage the domain index. Imagine if our model is given the domain index of the data, it may learn to rotate the data according to the domain index. Then after transforming the data into a common space, all labels can be separated perfectly. It turns out this idea can be easily implemented using an adversarial learning framework. But before going into details, let's first see how categorical domain adaptation works. The encoder takes the data X and maps it into an embedding Z. The predictor takes the embedding Z to make the prediction while the discriminator tries to distinguish source domain embeddings from target domain embeddings. Different from categorical domain adaptation, in our proposed continuously indexed adaptation, or CIDA in short, the encoder takes not only the data X, but also its domain index, U, and maps them into an embedding Z. The predictor remains the same. For the discriminator, instead of performing classification, it tries to regress the domain index using the given embedding. 
Training losses are quite simple. Our discriminator uses the L2 loss between the predicted and ground truth domain index. On the other hand, the encoder and predictor try to fool the discriminator while predicting the labels accurately. Note that this L2 loss is crucial to make the model aware of the distance between domain indexes. Even after taking into account the domain index, CIDR still faces another challenge. Let's consider the embedding space during training. Here we use different color regions to visualize the embedding distribution for a certain domain. Blue shows the embedding from domain 1, green for domain 2, and red for domain 3. Ideally, after training, we hope the embedding from different domains are aligned to have good generalization. So in an ideal case, for each embedding, it will check its probability of coming from every domain, as indicated in the histograms. It should be the same everywhere. However, with some theoretical analysis, we find that the vanilla version of CEDA is only guaranteed to match the expectation of the domain, but not the whole distribution. For example, it may converge to the case shown on the right, where the embeddings share the same expectation of the domain index, but actually have different distributions. The intuition is that since the discriminator only predicts one scalar to regress the domain index, it cannot represent the whole distribution of the domain index. To alleviate this issue, one idea is to match the variance as well. Consider the optimal convergence, suboptimal convergence case on the right. We can actually avoid it by matching the variance of the domain index. Unfortunately, this is achievable with a simple modification, which leads us to a probabilistic version of CIDR. Let me remind you that in the vanilla CIDR framework, the discriminator predicts the domain index of a given embedding, while in the improved version of CIDR, the discriminator predicts the mean and variance of the domain index. It's parameterized by a probabilistic neural network, so we call this new framework probabilistic CIDR, or PCIDR in short. Correspondingly, in PCIDR, we need to change the L2 loss to the negative Gaussian log likelihood. Our theory shows that PCIDR is guaranteed to match both the mean and variance of the domain index when converged. In terms of theoretical analysis, we prove that CIDR matches the expectation of the domain index for any embedding Z, and PCIDR matches the expectation and variance for any Z. More importantly, we also show that the global optimum of the two player game between the encoder and discriminator matches the global optimal of the three player game between the encoder, predictor, and discriminator. It basically says that we can train the encoder, predictor, and discriminator jointly and achieve both perfect alignment and accurate prediction across all domains. For the experiments, we use the following state-of-the-art categorical domain adaptation method as baselines. We use single-step methods such as ADA and NIA-NN, and a multi-step method, CUA, which is a simple way to augment categorical domain adaptation and incrementally performs adaptation one domain after another. Let's come back to the toy dataset to see how these methods perform. Recall that we have 30 continuously indexed domains. We use the first six domains as source domains and the rest as target domains. These are the results for categorical domain adaptation methods and our CIDA. We can see that CIDA successfully learns how the data distribution continuously evolves with the domain index and adapts from source domains to target domains. Here we take a closer look at CUA. We can see that it successfully captures the trend of the decision boundary, but the boundary is very rugged since the adaptation is done locally without seeing the global picture. In contrast, CIDA captures the correct chain and provides a smooth decision boundary. Similarly, we look at another toy data set with a sinusoidal shape. This is domain one, two, all the way to domain 6 and 12. Here we use the first five domains as source domains and the rest as target domains. In this setting, these are the results for ADA and DNN. Clearly, they fail to adapt to the target domains. This is the result 
for CUA, and this is for CIDA. Let's take a closer look at CUA, which performs poorly for the domains in the orange box. This is because CUA adapts incrementally one by one. Therefore, one failure in some intermediate domain will cause catastrophic failure for all following domains. Specifically here, it adapts from domain 5 to 6, from 6 to 7, from 7 to 8, and it fails badly when adapting from domain 8 to 9, causing catastrophic failure and poor performance for domains in the orange box. In contrast, CIDA can successfully and simultaneously adapt across all domains. To further evaluate our methods in real-world scenarios, we consider the problem of sleep study at home, where the input is time series signals from the patient's nasal cannula and breathing belt. A predictor such as a neural network will take in these signals to predict the corresponding sleep stage, which is one of the four classes, awake, REM, light sleep, and deep sleep. We use three real-world medical datasets, SHHS, NASA, and SOF, these datasets contain subjects of different ages, where age can be a domain index. Therefore, we can use CIDA to adapt across continuous domains. We can see the two settings for continuously domain adaptation. One is extrapolation, where we use younger patients as source domains and elder patients as target domains. Another is interpolation, where very young and very old patients are used as source domains and middle-aged patients as target domains. Here we show the results of CIDA and multiple baselines. As we can see, categorical domain adaptation hardly improves and sometimes may even hurt the performance, while CIDA and PCIDA can improve the performance in both settings. We also note that CIDA has larger performance gain in the extrapolation setting, since it's more challenging. We observe similar results in across dataset settings, as shown in the figure. Three datasets have different age distributions. Note that SOF contains only very old patients, therefore it's difficult to transfer from SOF to the other datasets with a much wider age range. Interestingly, PSIDA provides significant improvement on the performance. So far, we only consider one-dimensional domain indexes, such as patient's age. In practice, there are often multiple factors affecting the domain shift, and therefore we can include more variables as domain indexes. So here we introduce the idea of multi-dimensional domain indexes. For example, besides age, patient's physical wellness can also affect their sleep quality. For patients of the same age, those with better Physical health often have better sleep quality. Besides these two, there are more factors that can be considered, such as emotional wellness. Fortunately, our CIDA can be naturally extended to handle such multidimensional domain indexes. Our experiments demonstrate that multidimensional domain indexes can further improve adaptation performance. Here we consider domain indexes including age, physical wellness, emotional wellness, fatigue level, and other seven variables. We can see that performance consistently improves with more domain indexes. In summary, we identify the problem of adaptation across continuously indexed domains and propose the first general domain adaptation method for addressing this problem. Further, we provide theoretical guarantees that CIDA aligns continuously indexed domains at equilibrium. We provide two advanced versions, probabilistic CIDA and multidimensional CIDA, to further improve performance and handle multidimensional domain indexes with minimum overhead. Our theoretical results on both synthetic and real-world medical datasets show that CIDA and its variants significantly improve performance over state-of-the-art domain adaptation methods for continuously indexed domains. Thank you.